Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Gershwan, and you are watching One Mind Syndicate. Today we continue talking about Space Marine chapters as we get into the Star Phantoms. Very interesting, uh, shooty chapter. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions for other topics of Warhammer 40k, please comment down below. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe, because we post Warhammer 40k content every single day. With that said, let's get into 40 facts on the Star Phantoms. The Star Phantoms are a loyalist space marine chapter created during the so-called Sentinel founding. The Star Phantoms were one of several chapters whose mission was to take and hold various Sino contested regions on the very borders of the Emperor's domain. The Star Phantoms primarily wear white power armor. Symbols for squad types are black. The Aquila or Imperialis on the chest plate is light yellow, and the eye lenses on the helmets are red. The Star Phantoms chapter badge is a stylized black hourglass with a twin pair of skulls reflecting one another, forming the body of the hourglass. This symbolism is consistent with the mortuary beliefs of the Star Phantoms chapter. The Star Phantoms chapter is an Astarte chapter with a shrouded and sometimes troubled history. For much of their past, they have been left to operate alone at the edge of the Imperium breeding in them an isolationist streak that has seldom embraced outside command. The origins of the Star Phantoms lie in the 23rd founding of the early 38th millennium, known in some sources as the Sentinel founding, as it was created to aid the Imperium's defenses in numerous ill-starred and vulnerable areas of the galaxy. Their exact origins and primogenitor chapter remains a mystery, even during their creation, as did the backgrounds of many of the chapters of this founding. In the year 101 of the 40th millennium, the chapter's forces were recalled to defend its endangered homeworld of Hackerneth from sustained orc attack by a warring freebooter clan from the Edge Void. Assault waves larger than any seen before invaded the Harkoneth system. The Greenskin's attack was usually frenzied, as the orc attackers hurled themselves headlong at Harkoneth itself, taking immediate losses. Orc warships were shot down in the hundreds, and the whole cluster of attacking rocks were boarded and blasted apart without ever making landfall in a running battle that lasted 60 standard years, littering the star systems with wreckage in a firestorm of ordnance that threatened to exhaust the planet's considerable stockpile. Sensing immediate victory, the Star Phantoms soon faced the true nature of the oncoming threat as it materialized. A vast temporal warp rift surged like a deadly riptide toward the star system from the outer void, and at its vanguard came the horror of a massive crud migration trapped within the rift's event horizon. It was this time rip that the orc forces had been driven before in flight and that now engulfed the Harkoneth system, causing its sun to flare balefully. The rift all but cut off the system from the rest of the galaxy, with its surrounding vortex of spatial turbulence, and help, even if it had been available, was utterly out of reach. Immediately, the star phantoms mounted a valiant defense of their homeworld from the oncoming storm, but it became swiftly apparent their cause was lost, as reality itself began to buckle around them. As mishappened forms of the Hrud invaded their world, their presence distorted time and space, causing the very earth of Harkoneth to splinter and roil with quakes and tremors at the creature's passing. The chapter's losses were heavy, and none could doubt only oblivion awaited the survivors if they stayed. Chapter Master Omadon Tiresias ordered his remaining brethren to gather such relics as they could and flee rather than face certain destruction at the hands of an enemy they could not fight. It is rumored that not all the remaining brethren obeyed, preferring to stand and perish with their world. The chapter's last remaining battle barge, the Memento Mori, carrying with it the chapter's corpus of tech marines, led the ragged remains of their once proud fleet's escape from the rift vortex, lashing the star system. Many of the Star Phantom ships were destroyed in the desperate flight as Harkoneth, caught in the storm's eye, shattered behind them, 
and Tiresias himself was blinded when a rogue time speared the Memento Mori. Little more than a third of the chapter's strength would survive the destruction of their home system, and as a consequence of Harkonnet's destruction, the Star Phantoms would spend years slowly rebuilding their forces and would remain a fleet-based chapter right up until the Bad App War. From the tragic destruction of their homeworld, the Star Phantoms earned the dubious distinction of only a handful of chapters in the Imperium's own history to face a full-scale herd migration alone and survive. The Star Phantoms became a fleet-based chapter after the loss of Harkonneth, slowly rebuilding their strength and participating in numerous conflicts and interventions across the Segmentum Obscurus. The chapter quickly earned a merciless reputation for indiscriminate use of firepower and infliction of collateral damage. This reputation was further cemented when the chapter took part in the Markyrian Crusade from the year 392 to 399 of the 41st millennium. It was in the aftermath of this famous crusade that the Star Phantom's darkest hour came during the Bad App War. Although the chapter suffered terrible losses in the final apocalyptic engagement of the conflict, the Star Phantom's success was honored by granting of overlordship over the now ruined worlds of the Bad App Sector by the Imperial Inquisitor Legate of the Bad App Crusade, and the chapter chose the Ice Moon of Haga in the Archean system upon which found their new fortress monastery. Some sources have hinted that the Gene Seed of the Star Phantoms utilized Dark Angel Gene Seed, although this has vehemently been denied by the Dark Angels themselves, and the Star Phantoms consider such queries, even via official channels, as inherently presumptuous and the cause for offense. Likely this speculation is simply based on some observed similarities in library, iconography, and trappings, which along with the inherent introversion of the chapter has given birth to a likely unfound assumption by certain scholars of the Adeptus Terra. The existence of indigenous and often unique cult belief systems, martial philosophies, and variations of the cult imperialis within the Adeptus Astarte is far from uncommon. In the beginning we talked about the Mortuary Cult. The so-called Mortuary Cult of the Star Phantoms is of a more extreme variety and embraces the divinity of the God Emperor of Mankind as Imperator Mortifix, judge of the souls of the dead and keeper of martyrs. Accordingly, the brethren of the chapter see themselves as divinely ordained killers, angels of death in the truest sense. Grim Solem accompanies these proceedings at all times, and they care little for the individual glory of the warrior, but are instead consumed by the task of bringing death to those that defy the Emperor's will or seek to thwart his holy purpose. True to Imperial dogma, they hold as a very center tenet of their beliefs that only in death does duty end, and while they give little leeway to respite in the living, they deeply honor those who fall in the Emperor's service and hold the many martyrs of the Imperium and the dead of their chapter with extreme reverence. As part of their practices, the Star Phantoms have been observed to hold many strange and elaborate funerary customs, and it is commonplace for battle brethren of the chapter to maintain a personal reliquary containing votive items such as the ashes of fallen comrades as a talisman, and are also apt to use the ground dust of their enemy's bones compounded as lapping powder for their armor. The keepers and high priests of these cult practices are the Star Phantom's chaplains. Each company and detachment has its own attached mortuary chaplain to administer its rites, with a separate chantry of four reclusiarchs and a master of sanctity maintained as a key part of the chapter's command structure. The Star Phantom's initial deployment as a chapter was the shrine world of Hakoneth on the edge of the ravaged Sakara sector where they fortified one of the planet's mountainous mausoleum complexes to serve as their base of operations in Fortress Monastery. From this bastion, they sailed forth against the numerous foul Xenos form that plagued the region. The Star Phantom's neophyte recruits were drawn from the technologically regressive barbaric remnant population of the surrounding system, 
and their first task were to guard against the numerous horrors that plague the fallen seat of the Imperium's power. The Star Phantoms broadly conform to the standard patterns laid down in the Codex Astarte, with some considerable slant given in its deployment and production toward the preferred use of First Strike and drop assault weapons and war material, as well as exotic additions to the recognized tenets that tie in with their own unique beliefs. The chapter has a preferred use for heavy firepower to slaughter their enemies, closing to assault only when it is most tactically expedient to do so. For the Star Phantoms, no one mode of combat holds any inherent glory or value over another. All that matters instead is that death is dealt to the enemy. Thanks in part to the extensive and diverse chapter armory, the tactical doctrines of the Star Phantoms favor Space Marine carried portable heavy weapons to supply their combat firepower at close range. Both plasma and melta weapons, in particular, are fielded in comparably large numbers in the Star Phantoms ranks, with the chapters deploying a pattern of three Devastator squads per standard battle company, rather than the Codex approved number of two. This doctrine of close range firepower is also carried through by the Star Phantoms command structure with combi weapons again favoring the incorporation of melta and plasma designs produced in significant numbers by the chapter's tech marines and often carried into battle by its officers and veteran sergeants as a symbol of rank. In addition, the Star Phantoms maintain a sizable core of Vindicators and Land Raiders for use in armored spearhead attacks and manufacture and employ large numbers of Death Storm drop pods in a fire support role for planetary assault. And those were 40 facts on the Star Phantoms. There is a bit of lore that we did not cover that you could check out in the wiki page. Link is gonna be down in the description. And if you like this video and you wanna see more, please share this with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, or whatever social media you use. Uh, that really helps out the channel. If you wanna support us a little bit more, jump on over to Patreon. A simple dollar a month helps us create more videos for you guys. If you can't um, help us out with that, we understand. Um, simply by liking, commenting, and sharing, it really helps out the channel um so this chapter itself is really really interesting i love the color scheme i i'm i'm leaning more toward once i start buying primaris marines i don't want to continue with the imperial fist army i actually want to start a, you know, a different um chapter quite possibly that um lost legion chapter because the sound alchemist and and i were supposed to create um, our own Lost Legion chapters, but I never got around to it, so I might do that. And this color scheme of all white with black looks really, really nice. Um, it, I feel like it just pops, especially if you include the um, all the cool designs in the new Primaris Marine models. Uh, but again, uh, it's a really good chapter for range, uh, which I like. Uh, I play orcs, so melee is my thing. Um, I want to play another army and not have melee be my central strategy. Uh, so playing something like the Star Phantoms chapter uh, would be pretty cool because it's range, you know. Uh, but again, guys, comment whatever you would like down in the comment section below. We read the comments every single day. We would love to hear what you think of the Star Phantoms. I'll see you guys tomorrow. This was Gershwan with One Mind Syndicate, signing out. Oh, 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 oh.